Alright, hi students. Um, welcome to today's online lesson, uh, which is on the chapter on matters. So before we start, right, just make sure that you have your notes with you. And as the lesson proceeds, all the words that are in the red are usually the uh, keywords to the blanks that you have in your notes. Alright, let's get started. For this first part of um, three videos, we are actually going to look at four key questions. First of all, what are the physical properties of metals? Um, what are the common uses of metals? What are some examples of alloys? As well as why are alloys more widely used as compared to pure metals? So let's take a look at the first key questions. What are the common physical properties of metals? Right now, I would just like you all to think about some of the things that you already know beforehand. Maybe in lower sec, you have already learned about some stuff about how um, the characteristics of metals are like. Okay. So if you recall, there's actually a few points that we can talk about. And um, this is actually a structure of how you draw the metallic solid structure, um, which you really learned in the kinetic particle theory already. So these are four key physical properties of metals. Firstly, they are malleable, uh, which means that they can be bent or hammered into different shapes. And they are also ductile. Ductile means that they can be stretched into wires. All right. The second physical property is that they have a very high density. The third one is that they are good conductors of heat and electricity. And the fourth one is that they actually have very high melting and boiling points compared to the other elements in the periodic table. So how do we link these properties to the structure of metals which you see over here? First of all, metals are actually malleable and ductile because if you look at the structure, right, the layers of metal atoms, which are of the same size, they can actually slide over each other very, very easily if you were to apply a force. So for instance, if I were to take a hammer and to strike it against the metal against in this direction, I can actually shift the entire layers of um, atoms. Okay, just imagine uh, it's like rows and rows, and if you hit it, it will actually shift one row uh, against the other one. So that is what actually happens, and that allows it to become malleable and ductile. The second physical property, which is high density, is because that the metal atoms, right, they're actually very, very closely packed, as you can see from the structure over here. So it results in a uh, large number of metal atoms per unit volume, hence the density is high. The third property on good conductors of heat and electricity is actually because in the metallic structure itself, right, there's a lot of free moving electrons and these electrons can actually help to conduct electricity from one end of this structure to the other end, as well as for heat conduction. Last but not least, it has a high melting and boiling point because a lot of energy is actually required to overcome the strong electrostatic forces of attraction that is present within the structure itself. So, now that you know how to relate this structure of metals to the physical properties, we'll go on and take a look at what are some of the common uses of metals. As you know, metals can be used to make many different objects. So for instance, over here I have my aluminium foil, which is made of aluminium. Um, I have my iron nail. Right. Um, in the third image here, I actually have my copper wire, which is made out of copper. Right. And this last one, right, is actually something that's very interesting. So for those of the sec trees who have went for the OBIA before, if you recall when you were visiting the locals' um, houses, for instance in Bintan or even in Cambodia, you realize that a lot of them uses a roof that are similar to this one that you see over here, and there's certain metallic structure on top of the roof if it is not just like your typical iron roof right so what exactly is this application we'll take a look at this so the choice of using which metal right actually depends on a few factors firstly the physical properties that we are looking at um, we can look at the cost itself whether is it very expensive or cheap as well as the physical chemical properties in the case of say aluminium right aluminium foil over here we actually want it to be resistant to corrosion so that you can keep your food for longer period of time so, with that in mind, um, let's look at some examples of the common metals that we know. Let's say copper, for instance. All right, copper, right, is used to make um, electric wires and cables. Right, uh, can be used to make alloys. Uh, if you look at all these different applications of metals, right, okay, you do have to know some of the more common usage of these metals. So, take some time to um, understand and remember how these uses come about. But I just want to point out this one right now. That is actually in maroon color, galvanized iron sheets. Okay, I would like you to highlight this on your notes itself. Now, this term galvanized, right? You will actually learn more about this in the following videos or back in class. But right now, I just want to tell you that in this last image over here, 
what you see is that um, it is actually an iron roof that has been galvanized. So galvanized is the word that we use when we say that there's a layer of zinc on top of them. So what does the zinc do? The zinc actually protects and um, um, actually prevents the iron that's below it from rusting. Right? So this is a process that we call sacrificial protection, uh, which we'll learn in the later part of this lesson. The second thing that I want to highlight over here are all the words that are in blue. If you look at them, you realize that there's a very common um, term that comes about, and that is this word, alloy. Right? Every metal somehow seems to sorry, seems to have one of the applications being that it is being used to make an alloy. Right, so exactly what, exactly what is an alloy? So let's take a look at this. An alloy is actually a mixture of metal with other elements. These other elements can either be your metallic element or your non-metallic element. Right, so over here I have a few examples. Say I have brass, uh, I have uh, stainless steel, and I have bronze. Right, all these are alloys. Okay, here are three common alloys that we talk about. First of all, we have stainless steel. Okay, so what is it made up of? The composition. What are the elements that are made up? alloy so for stainless steel we actually have iron carbon chromium and nickel right for we just go through all these alloy first for bronze we are is made out of copper and tin for brass is actually made out of copper and zinc right so what are some of the properties of this um, alloy so stainless steel um, as all of us know is corrosion resistant so uh, meaning that it wouldn't rust Right, wooden rust. So in this case, it can be used to make different materials such as your cutlery, uh, the fork and spoon that you use at home. Right. Um, for bronze itself, it gives it a very attractive color appearance, which um, we often use it to make sculptures, uh, decorative ornaments that like you see over here in this bell. For brass, it is attractive and at the same time, it is also corrosion resistant, which allows it to be used to make, say, musical instruments and decorative ornaments, etc. So these are just some applications of alloys. Now, why are alloys more widely used as compared to pure metals? The first and most important reason is because alloys are actually a lot, a lot stronger and harder as compared to pure metals. Right? So let's take for example, say this musical instrument, this trumpet over here. The trumpet is actually made of brass, which is a mixture of copper as well as zinc. Right. The reason why we use brass instead of the pure copper or pure zinc to make this is because brass is actually a lot a lot stronger and harder as compared to these two pure elements. As a result, even if this equipment were to drop on the floor, knock against the wall whatsoever, right, it will not be damaged that easily as compared to if you were to use the pure elements itself. And why is that the case? So you see, pure metals, right, they're actually very, very weak. So over here, same thing, I have the solid structure of, um, say, iron, for example. We have neatly arranged uh, rows of atoms of the similar size, right? Because they are all made of the same element, so they are packed in layers. What happens is that if I would apply a force on, say, the right side over here, as I mentioned just now in the previous slide, the layers of atoms can actually slide over each other very, very easily. Right? And what you see over here is that the shape of the metal will actually change. And this is uh, not something that we really want. For instance, when you make a musical instrument such as uh, the trumpet, you wouldn't want it to, once it falls, then suddenly the shape change and it becomes a bent uh, shape, for instance. So, this particular um, uh, phenomenon actually results in the pure metals being usually a lot, a lot weaker than what we want. Right? And hence, we don't usually use them in its pure form. However, this property is also actually the reason why we say that the pure metals are actually malleable in nature. Right? So if you have a pure metal, when you have to hit it with a hammer or you have to stretch it into wires, uh, you actually give the property of it being malleable or it being ductile. Right? So this is actually the explanation behind it. But when we use in certain cases, we don't want it to be entirely so um, easily changed. So we wouldn't want it to be such a weak piece of material. As a result, we use an alloy. Over here, I actually have the atomic structure of an alloy. So you see over here, the orange uh, orange circles right, are still representing the iron atoms. But in this case, I have steel. So steel is actually a mixture of iron and carbon. So this is actually your iron um, atom, whereas this is your carbon atom. Right, The carbon atom is a lot smaller than the iron atom. I 
as you will learn in the periodic table. So you realize that in this structure now, there's actually atoms of different sizes. Now, what does this mean? This means that if, as compared to previously, there is no longer an orderly arrangement of the atoms anymore. So you say that this disrupts the orderly arrangement of atoms. And if I were to apply a force this time round, the atoms of the different sizes can no longer slide over one another. Right, if you think about it, if I were to apply a force over here from the right to left, right, there's no way that these rows of blue atoms can be pushed towards the left side because now there's a very huge orange atom over here that's blocking the sliding movement. Right, as a result, the alloy overall as a material, it becomes a lot stronger and hence they are being used uh, preferentially as compared to the pure metals. So besides increased strength, there's also other some other reasons that we choose to use alloys. So these are things that you can actually take down in your notes. First of all, it can help to improve the appearance of metals. Right over here, you can see these two images. They will actually look a lot, a lot more attractive as compared to the pure copper or the pure iron, which is uh, in fact a very dull grey color. And how do we make metals more resistant to corrosion? We can also use alloys. Right, and that's the case of uh, most of the coins that we have in the world. Now, having mentioned about all these um, different key questions, now let's just take a quick while to actually consolidate all these thoughts. Um, we have a few self-practice questions for you to think about, and when you complete these questions, your teachers will actually go through with you back in class. So firstly, what are two physical properties of metals which, which, them, which make them useful as constructing materials? Secondly, uh, what is meant by the term malleable and ductile? Why is an alloy? Give two examples. And last but not least, explain why alloys are a lot harder and stronger than the pure metals. Now, when you have to explain this, right, do take note to compare between the structures of your metal, the pure metal, and your alloy. Alright, so do a comparison when you are explaining this and link to the structure, link to the arrangement of the atoms, atom sizes, etc. Okay, so in summary, these are the four questions that we talk about. Firstly, what are the physical properties of metals? But more importantly, to learn how to link this to the structure of metal, the atomic structure. Secondly, what are the common uses of metals? You do, do need to take some time to digest and memorize this. What are some examples of alloys? As well as last but not least, why are alloys more widely used as compared to pure metals? Right? And with that, this is actually the end for the combined science students. For the pure chem students, there's actually a few more slides that we'll talk about. So if you wish to continue for the combined science students, you can continue to view this video. If not, we may end the video right now. So for the pure camp students, there's actually two more learning objectives that we must touch on. Firstly, we need to take a look at how the different proportion of elements used to make steel, in particular steel, actually changes the properties of the steel itself. Next, um, we'll take a look at what are some of the common uses of what we call mild steel and what we call stainless steel. Alright, so th these two object learning objectives mainly um, elaborates on the alloy of steel. Firstly, as mentioned just now, steel is actually an alloy of iron with carbon and other elements. Right? So um, the properties and uses of the steel can actually change with the amount of carbon and the other elements that are being added. What do I mean by that? When you have to add in a small amount of carbon, you actually get a different kind of steel. Or when you add in a large amount of carbon, you actually get another kind of steel. There's a need for us to take a look at three common types of steels and how their composition varies and how they are used varies also. First, we'll take a look at something that we call the mild steel. Mild steel are actually what was known as the low carbon steel. And in comparison to high carbon steel, let's take a look at their composition. So for mild steel, right, there's about 0.25% of carbon inside, whereas for high carbon steel, there's actually 0.45 to 1.5% of carbon. So what you're seeing here is that one has more carbon than the other. And what does this brings about? It affects the properties. So for mild steel, right, they are strong, but they are still malleable. Whereas for high carbon steel, they are a lot stronger because of the presence of more carbon, but this makes them very, very brittle. 
If you take a look at why one is malleable, whereas the other one becomes brittle. For mild steel, right, like what I mentioned just now in the description of alloys, the different sizes of the carbon atoms disrupts the orderly arrangement, and as a result, it gives it more strength, so it's harder for the um, a force to cause the atoms to slide. For the high carbon steel, however, because there's so much disruption of layers in the fact that there's a lot of carbon atoms interspersed within the atomic structure itself, that when a force is applied, the metal actually fractures and it breaks. Right? And this actually affects the uses of these two types of steel. So for mild steel, right, it's strong, but it can be changed in terms of the shape itself. But whereas for high carbon steel, if you were to uh, try to force the shape to change, it will actually crack and fracture, but it is a lot, a lot stronger. So what are the uses? For low carbon steel or mild steel, we actually use it for car bodies and machinery because we need to shape the structure of the steel itself, right? Whereas for high carbon steel, we actually use them to make um, stronger tools such as knives, hammers, chisels, saws, and other cutting tools which we require it to be very, very, very strong and um, we are certain that it is not meant to be bent uh, in different shapes or we have force applied uh, to its structure. The last type of steel that we'll talk about is your stainless steel. As what I mentioned just now, iron, carbon, nickel, and chromium mix up the stainless steel as an alloy. Um, the properties wise, it is very durable, it's highly resistant to corrosion, as a result, it's being used in your cutlery or your surgical instruments, etc. Right, so the property that allows it to be used for this is because they are resistant to corrosion. In other words, uh, they will not rust as compared to your pure iron itself. Okay, and with that, we have come to the end of the video. So do remember to attempt the worksheets or 10-year series questions that your teachers have allocated to you. And I'll see you in the second part of the video.